Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and thanks to all the awesome responses from you guys out there, really appreciate them all. We're gonna do the rigging of the gorilla that I created in the last tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, check that one out and we're gonna rig that little gorilla guy right now and we're gonna do some rubber hose style rigging. So it's a very easy way to rig up simple characters without needing to get into more advanced uh, IK and waiting and all that kind of stuff. So we're not gonna get any of that. We're gonna do some really easy, simple rigging. And if you've seen some of my past tutorials doing the IK kind of bendy uh, rubber hose kind of rig, definitely check this one out because I go a little bit deeper into some of the concepts and uh, I hope you'll learn a lot. So let's, uh, let's get into rigging our little gorilla dude. All right, so let's rig this guy and get this gorilla moving and grooving. And what we're gonna do is rig him using splines and point IK. Now, that might uh, sound a little bit complicated, but it's not, it's super easy, and it's one of the easiest ways to rig a simple character without needing to get into the more advanced concepts of rigging, like weighting and joint stuff. So no weighting, we're not gonna Bob Ross, weight paint anything here we are going to use splines to rig this guy so let me just demonstrate that and the first actually the first thing i need to do is i set this rig up just very quickly in my other uh my last tutorial by using symmetry objects and for uh, and for our rig what we're going to do is just get rid of the symmetry objects for now so i'll just take the leg and the arm and just move them out underneath of the symmetry so we just have one arm one leg and what we're going to do is just keep things nice and organized and rename all this stuff because we're going to ultimately have two legs two arms you know like a normal uh thing like a creature like a normal thing got two arms two legs so what we're going to do is uh just name this the left leg and just do l underscore leg and this is going to come uh this is going to be important later on because what we're going to do is rename these based on that underscore. So that's just kind of how I like to work. So then for the arm, we'll do L underscore arm. And uh, now what we need to do is, like I said, we're gonna be rigging with splines. So I'm gonna go into my front view here. And what we're gonna do is draw a spline where we want his arm to go. So what I'll do is go to spline, pen tool, and I'll just draw just like uh, I'm drawing with a spline or a path in After Effects. And what I'm gonna do is position this second point where his elbow would be. And then right at the bottom, I'm gonna make this final point match exactly where his knuckle kind of hits the floor, something like that. And then we can go in here and kind of edit this and adjust this if we want. And actually what I'm gonna do is go into my spline object here and just make the type to linear for now. So we'll just, just so we can get a better representation of like, okay, this definitely looks like where the elbow should be. It looks about halfway between this point and this point on the floor. So that's looking good. And then all I need to do now is just again, keep this uh, all structured and named correctly. So I'll do L underscore arm dot spline. So we have left arm spline and I'll just move this right here. So let's go into our overhead view and just make sure because I think I drew this in the wrong position. So right now you can see that our arm spline is right back there. All I'm going to do is move this forward a little bit there. And that looks about centered. And I'll go to my parallel view here. And the only thing I need to do now is use a spline wrap so I can actually uh, wrap this geometry and bend and deform this geometry of the left arm to follow along that left arm spline. And to do this, I have my left arm and it's made up of our thumb, our pointer, finger, and uh, our main arm. So three capsules here. So to have the spline wrap deform all three of those, I'm just gonna drag and drop the spline wrap. So it's in the same level of the hierarchy of all of those objects. And you can see that the direction that this is facing is actually the wrong way. We need to do like a uh, negative Y, so it's facing down. You can now see that that arrow is now vertical and that matches what we're gonna try to do here. And then all I need to do is go ahead and define the spline that I want this geometry to be wrapped around. That's that left arm spline. If we did this correctly, 
There we go. We should see that if I grab one of these points here, you can see that, okay, my geometry is moving. The only thing that is going wrong is that my thumb, we like twisted his arm and that looks very painful. So what we're gonna do is go into the spline wrap here and just adjust the banking and just rotate that like 180 degrees. So his thumb is actually facing the correct direction. So now that that's looking good. Now what I'm gonna do at this point is just hide this spline wrap so we don't see it. Uh, I don't want to see that box when we're just moving around here. So I'm going to double click on the little stoplight there, change it to red. And now we can set up this rig because right now the only way to edit this is if I go into uh, my actual spline and move things around. But this is not a very efficient way to work. So what we're going to do is use a system that is called the point IK. And what we're going to do to grab that is to go to our character tags, right click on the spline go to IK and then turn on point IK. Now what this is gonna do is look at the points on our object here or on our spline and decide how this IK rig is gonna work. Now IK is inverse kinematics, which means that when we move this hand, it's actually gonna move everything else. And that's just basic rigging. If you wanna learn more about FK and IK, definitely check out my other tutorial that kind of goes through the differences between those two. But now when we have, uh, when we want to set up a rig, we have to set up the start point and then the end point. And point systems work starting with zero. So it doesn't start with one, it starts with zero. So that's point zero. Our elbow is point one. And then our actual hand is point two. So our start point will be zero. And then our end point will be two. You'll see that once that is set to two, we now have this green line that shows the relationship between point zero and point two. Now what we have to do is set a goal. And what the goal is, is basically like uh, wherever your hand wants to go. If your hand, this gorilla's hand, wants to grab a banana, that's the goal of that hand. So basically that's like a little way of visualizing like what a goal does. It, it guides where that hand is moving. So I'm gonna add a goal. And where did that goal go? Right here. So it just comes up as just an unnamed null. So I need to rename this again to keep things straight. So this is L underscore arm dot goal. And if I go ahead to my model mode here and I move this around, you can see that the goal is moving where that hand is. And it's also bending the elbow. And we got this nice deformation here. And if we wanted to, we could go into our arm and crank up the height segments to try to smooth out or make it even pointier. Maybe we have a, like a low poly arm or something like that. Uh, but I'll just keep that like 25 for now. But you can see that this is kind of like very simple, like a uh, puppet tool kind of thing uh, where you don't have to wait, you don't have to rig uh, too, too much here. Uh, the other thing I want to do is kind of demonstrate that right now we're using a linear spline So we have that nice pointy elbow, but if we want a nice more rubber hose type of arm we can just switch this type to uh, Either one of these different modes here and I I prefer B spline But you can see that using these different modes like cubic that has a much more uh, curved arc so this is all dependent on what uh, what you want to, what that look is that you want for your little bendy arm here. So you can see he's uh, yo-ho-hoing away here. So say we wanted to have our gorilla wave and we have his, uh, let's just go into our big view here. And we want him to wave. You can see that we're having a little bit of a problem here. And that is that his elbow is always facing outwards. Now we need an extra element here to control where that elbow is pointing and what that element is in rigging is called the pole or the pole vector and if I just go ahead and say add pole you're gonna see this L arm spline pole shows up and if I go ahead and see where this is positioned it's positioned right near his back area but if I move this out you can see that wherever I move this sp uh, this pole is actually pointing or is determining where his elbow is pointing to. So this is very important because when you do character animation, you need to animate both the arm or the goal, and you also need to animate the pole to do certain things. You can see that his arm's kind of detached here. So what we can do 
is go to our left arm spline here and we can actually like grab this uh, top point and move this a little bit closer and actually what I want to do is be able to like rotate this whole entire arm now I can do this by just rotating the spline but I don't want to work like that because then I would have to actually adjust this anchor point and all this stuff so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and right click and group this object and I'll just rename this L underscore arm uh, let's just see control and then what I'm going to do is go into my enable snap mode and I'm going to snap the actual anchor point of this left arm null and just snap it to if I get to where this not the vertex but the actual spline you'll see L arm spline vertex snap that's exactly where we want to snap that so not the actual vertex but the left arm spline and now that null is snapped to that top point of that left arm spline and if I go ahead and grab like the uh, left arm goal and drag this underneath I can actually go ahead and rotate this arm like this so this is a very good uh, like rotation control here and one thing I'm going to do is you can see that this is kind of we're, we're getting a lot of elements here and to be able to select them and keep selecting in our object manager is kind of cumbersome so what we're going to do is actually get different icons or different display icons for our poles and our goals and our all these nulls here and make it more visually uh, efficient here so right now I just have this dot representation of this like pole null so what I'll do is like change this to a pyramid and we'll scale this sucker up and we'll change the orientation to like um, let's do XZ so you can see that it's facing backwards here so you can see that okay it's facing back like that so it's nice and big and then what I'm going to do is go into the basic tab here and change the color to something else so we'll change this display color to let's get like some obnoxious pink perhaps that's some good obnoxious pink color and you'll see that now we have that nice pink color and I can actually click on the icon color here and I believe this was introduced in Cinema 4D R16 and this kind of makes this icon stand out and have that same color so there's our poll. Let's do our goal the same thing. And let's go to our goal, go to object, and we'll have this visualized as a circle. And then we'll just scale up the radius here. And you can see that we have the orientation set to camera, so it'll always face us, and that's actually fine. Uh, what we can do is then change the color for this. And let's try, let's do like a, a happy blue. There we go something like that or teal and then again we can change this icon color and the great thing about having all of these visually represented in our scene here is that we can now just grab that shape and easily move and manipulate all of these objects so now all we have to do is go to our left arm control and then uh, you know again this is the rotation of the entire arm so what I'll do is go to object we'll use let's do like a uh, Let's do a rectangle and we'll scale this sucker up. And again, we'll adjust the orientation here. So maybe it's like that. And actually let's do, let's do a circle for this one as well. So now we have this circle here. All we have to do is grab that circle and rotate and boom. So it's very good to set this up in an efficient way that you can easily access all these uh, little controls here. So again, we can change this color. Let's do, uh, we've got some obnoxious pink. Let's do uh, some obnoxious yellow. Let's do that. And again, change the icon color. So now we can easily see visually, these are our three objects here, our three controls that we'll need to worry about when building this rig. So now we can move his arm down here, something like that. And what I'm gonna do is you can see this is kind of twitching and that's because I still have my snap enabled. So I'll just disable my snap and now he can I'm not snap in anything. He's not so fidgety. All right, so we got one left arm all set. Let's actually do the same thing to the leg. So we're gonna do some point IK again and that requires us to create a spline again. So here's our left arm, left arm group here. And I'll just group all this stuff together 
and this will just be uh, l underscore arm dot group and uh, let's do the same thing with the legs. So let's go ahead and draw our spline. Go to the pen tool. And again, we're gonna put this first point right at the very top of that cylinder of the leg. And we're going to then set where the knee is gonna be. And what I'm gonna do is use, uh, or give the eye case system a little bit of an idea of where the knee is gonna point towards. So I'm gonna just move this point a little bit forward to just represent where that knee is going to be pointing initially. So it's going to be pointing forward. And then I'll put a, another point right at the bottom there. And I'm going to go to my spline and let's rename this. So this will be L underscore leg uh, spline. And then I can just go and select this and choose what type of interpolation I want. And let's just do B spline for now. And then to actually have this spline to form our leg, we need to go and grab our where is it? Spline wrap. And then again, we're just going to throw this underneath the leg. So it's affecting both the toe and the leg objects here. And then just drag and drop this leg spline. And again, you're going to see if I go into my parallel view here that the leg is pointing the wrong direction. So just like we did with the, uh, the arm spline wrap, we're going to need to adjust the axis here. And let's maybe do like a negative Y. And there you go, and you can see that his toe is actually pointing the wrong way. So what we'll need to do is adjust the banking for this as well. And maybe do like a negative 90, that looks good. And again, his, uh, because where we put that spline, it's actually in the center of his body. So we need to go ahead and move this spline so it's on the left side of his body and doesn't look a, uh, in, is not in a very precarious position there. All right, so we got the leg spline. Let's go ahead and right click this leg spline, go to our character tags and do the point IK with this as well. And again, we have three points. So it starts at point zero and then goes to point two. And you can see that green line creating that connection between point zero and point two. And again, we'll do a goal and a pole and let's go ahead and here is that goal so left leg dot goal and i'm not sure why they don't like have this named automatically like the pole here uh but i don't know that's just weird so let's go and we'll move this uh pole and again the pole is where that knee is going to point to so you can see that i'm pointing it forward and again we'll do where we have uh, the visual representation of our pole as a pyramid. We'll have this facing x, z, and we'll scale up the radius here. And again, we'll go ahead, grab an obnoxious pink <laughs> for the pole, do the icon color. So just so we know all of our poles are the same color and all that good stuff. And then for the goal, we'll use the uh, that little kind of tealish blue kind of thing change the icon color and we'll change this uh, goal to a circle as well same thing as the arm so we'll go to display circle scale this up and uh, all right looking good so now again we have easy control of where this is all happening so what i want to do now is be able to control the uh, the derriere of this monkey here or this gorilla uh, so i can like rotate him around and then his if he does a little butt wiggle it'll move his legs so what i'm going to do is basically set up controllers for that and basically use that same spline wrap setup for the body here so what i'm going to do is go into my right mode here and this is going to be very simple so we'll just go uh, grab the pen tool and again, just put a spline point at the very tip of where that uh, the body capsule, which is just that one capsule there, and then right uh, one right by the butt, right there. And what I'll do is then name this uh, just let's just do hip spline, something like that. And then same kind of workflow. We'll group this body together and group that and go ahead and 
grab our spline wrap and place this underneath that null. And let's rename this uh, body group. Cool. And then the spline wrap will just drag in this hip spline. So the great part about this, and again, you're going to see that this is actually rotating the wrong direction here. We can adjust this to uh, negative Y. And what you're going to notice is that the spline wrap is rotated. So we'll just zero out the rotation there. And boom, we have this back to normal. And uh, now we have this hip spline. And what we can do is kind of like shake, shake his booty by moving this point right here. And this will actually work for like any kind of character, like in the main torso area. And this is just more simplified because it's this gorilla. Uh, but you could add like a third point uh, in the middle here, just like we did with the arms. So we can get a little bit of bend, but uh, I'm not going to do that. So what I'll do with this, go into my uh, parallel view here. And we're going to set up the IK rig uh, basically the same way on the hip. Because I want a controller that will control the hip. And right now... The only way we have to access that is by actually grabbing that point and moving it around. But I actually want a goal that will control that. So what I'll do is right click, character tags, IK, point IK, and again we'll set the start, and that'll be the head area, and that'll be point zero, and then it'll end at point one. So we just have the two points here. And then what I can do is add the goal, and I'll just name this hip goal. It's the hippest goal of all. And we'll just go and adjust this to like a circle, scale this up, and we'll change the orientation here. There we go. So now when we move this, he's got his little, he's doing a little butt shaking. Uh, and then what we can do is actually use this goal and control the, uh, the actual leg spline. So we can drag and drop the leg spline, so the leg is connected to the hip goal, and then we can move this around and it'll move the leg. All right, so what you're gonna see is that if I move this too far, his legs just kind of detach. So what I'm gonna do with this hip goal here is add a constraint. So I can't move it in the negative or positive Z here. So I can just move it up and down in the left and right butt shake. So what I'm gonna do is right click on this hip goal Go to Cinema 4D Tags, go to Protection, and what I'm going to do is lock the, uh, I'll just uncheck all of these, and I'll just lock the position Z. So now you can see that I can move it left and right, I can move it up and down, but I cannot move it in the Z. So Protection Tag will prevent you from doing that and save yourself from yourself. All right, so everything's looking good. We have all of our rigs set up, all of our controls. Now we just gotta make the right side of our arms and legs, because right now he's fairly uh, handicapped. Let's give him uh, let's give him the other side. So what we're gonna do is just need to group everything together. So all of our left arm elements are grouped together already, uh, but our uh, right or our left leg group is kind of all over the place. So let's go ahead and uh, let's remove this left leg spline just for now from underneath that hip goal. And we'll just group the left leg object. So all the left leg spline, pole, uh, goal, the actual spline, and the leg with the actual spline wrap and the geometry. We'll right click and we'll just make this L underscore leg dot group. And just make sure that we got everything there. All right. And now what we can do is select the left leg group and the left arm group go to character mirror tool and this is where naming all these things correctly comes in handy so we have l underscore leg l underscore arm for all these elements because uh, typically you don't have to really mess around with anything like this uh, in here but we want to go into this naming tool and by default this is just blank so what we want to do is replace that l underscore with the R underscore. So you can see that that naming convention that we use is super, super important because now when we go ahead and just hit the mirror, you can see that we now have the copies 
on the right side, and that actually automatically renamed everything for us, which is really awesome. So now we have our controls on the other side. The one thing you're going to notice is that uh, a few things are wrong with the left arm here, or the right arm here, and that is that our color is switched. And that is because what the mirror command does is basically flips everything. So it changes it from like a positive to negative. So right now our arm is still a capsule and the orientation kind of stayed the same. So we need to manually flip this to po from positive Y to negative Y. And then the same thing with our spline wrap, uh, this didn't change at all. So we need to actually change this from 180 and just zero that out. And that should have our arm facing the right direction. So that's, so if you ever have run into those issues, uh, just change the spline wrap rotation and then the uh, orientation of your primitive if you're still using a primitive object because those will uh, remain the same with that mirror command. And uh, so now we have our whole entire setup here. All right, so let's go ahead and start moving things around and grouping things uh, together that makes sense. So the hip goal, uh, again, we need to attach our legs. So the legs are attached to the hip goal. So let's go ahead and let's grab our leg splines. So let's grab both the leg splines actually. So here's our leg, here's the right leg and the left leg. Let's pull these out and drag these underneath that hip goal. So you can see that when I move this, it's all wacky. And why that is is because all of our order of operations are out of whack. Uh, we have some spline wraps happening before the actual splines are affected by the IK, so that's the wrong order. So we actually need the IK to happen before the spline wraps, and now when we move this around, it acts as we expect it to. So one thing you notice is when I move this goal, our legs are just kind of uh, not doing what we want. Uh, and we have to change a few things, and one cool thing in the IK tag, so I'm gonna go into the leg spline IK tags here, is this really handy squash and stretch. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the stretch to 100%. Now watch what happens when I move this hip goal up. You're gonna see that we have stretching, which is kinda of cool. You know, for cartoony movements, stretching is, you know, nothing taboo, like that just looks more cartoony, right? One thing you're gonna notice though is that when I stretch up far enough, our legs kind of flip. And this is just happening within the spline wrap here. And the one thing we need to do is go into both of our leg spline wraps. And we have this banking, but depending on where we switch things and move things, the spline may switch. So we need to make sure that the, the legs or the splines are always pointing the same direction. One way to do this is if we move this, let's move the hip goal up enough where it flips. So that's where it flips. Let's go to both of our spline wraps here. And what we're gonna do is adjust the up vector and put a value in here that tells the object to always face a certain direction. So this is X, Y, and Z. So I want these legs to always point in the positive Z. So what I'll do is go to my up vector and this is X, Y, and Z. And I'll just put a positive value of one in the positive Z here. And now when we move this, you'll see that that will always say constrain forward. So this can also go with the arm. So if you ever see problems with the arms flipping a certain way, we can always go into the spline wraps for the arms and adjust the up vector there as well. But I think uh, everything is good there. All right, so we got our hip moving and growing here, but uh, we actually need to do a little bit more grouping. So the arms and the head are actually moving along with this hip. So what we'll do is just grab the uh, arm controls here. So right arm and left arm control and just drag it underneath the hip goal. We can move that. And then we'll also drag and drop this hip spline underneath here too, so we'll move along with it. And then the only thing left is to add the head. And then once I can rotate, I can now rotate this around. We've got the squash and stretch on the legs there, so we can move very far. And uh, those will always stay planted because the leg uh, goals are outside of this main group. So we could also take the arm goals out from underneath the hip goal too. If say we wanted those uh, arms to always be planted so we can be like ooh, 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 and all that good stuff. Uh, but that's just one thing you can do. So it all depends on what kind of animation you wanna do 
and all that good stuff. But you can see that having all these controls is very important when it comes to rigging because there are so many elements to keep track of. You got the goals, the poles, the controllers here, and all that good stuff. So now with everything all set up, you can go ahead and animate all these controls and all these goals. And you can have this guy do some fist pump and all that stuff. Uh, and what I like to do is either animate all these things by hand, so setting keyframes for the goals and all that good stuff, or using pose morph tag and pose morphs. And I have a couple tutorials out about using pose morph to animate characters, so definitely check those out. But uh, hopefully this gets you playing inside of Cinema 4D. And if you have a simple character like this, uh, point IK rigging is such a good alternative uh, because with using spline wraps and uh, splines, you don't have to worry about the laborious waiting, waiting or doing joints and all that kind of stuff, which is a little bit more complicated. So if you think this is complicated, just wait until you get to weights in IK, uh, an actual IK with joints. Those are those are really fun. Yeah, and they're, they're, it's, a head, it's a head scratcher sometimes. So get to animating. All right, so that's how we can do some traditional rubber hose style rigging and uh, make our moving and grooving gorilla shaking his money maker. And uh, this, this had a lot in it. So uh, if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments sections. Uh, and if you make any of your characters, making them dance or anything like that. Definitely want to see it. So share it with me on Twitter, on Facebook, on the Instagrams. Love to see what you guys are coming up with. And if you like this tutorial, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. And as always, thank you guys so much for the support. Love hearing your tutorial requests. So if you have a tutorial request, definitely leave them in the comment section as well. And if you want to see uh, some, maybe some animation or something like that uh, for characters, hit me up as well. I'd love to hear what you guys had in mind. But I will see you all in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.